So welcome people of God. So I want to share with you um, really a word of encouragement, but this is also a prophetic word. Like I am in giving you this word, speaking it into and over your life. So I was sitting with the Lord and a lot of times in this ministry, you have heard me and you will probably hear me gleam a lot from my time in corporate America. It was foundational for me as far as my growth and just knowing, just everything I feel like has made me to be the leader that I am in the kingdom foundationally started in corporate America. And so I was talking to the Lord um, as God has had me in this place since December of last year of really leaning into releasing, like releasing the old and just really being in agreement with the new, like God has had me in this place. And so in being in this place, this really significant time, I, I really feel like it was the time that launched me into leadership. I started to like go over that time in my heart with the Lord. And in that time, I was in a really, 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 really hard place. I had had a lot of favor um, at one point in time. I was being put, I was a representative and I was being put on a lot of projects that were preparing me for leadership. And the person that was my mentor at the time got promoted and he left the call center. And it was an immediate like shift in how I was being treated. And I was actually being treated with a lot of hostility and resentment and, you know, not being picked for anything. And I did not handle it well. I was very, very angry 99% of the time. I isolated myself. I would like just come to work and be angry and steaming and just completely angry. And it did nothing for helping me and helping my reputation as far as, you know, wanting to progress into leadership. It just really made me seem like it just it was not a good look like like ply said i was big mad like i was big and people knew it like i was like okay y'all want to knock i'm gonna buck and i was big mad for a long time and it just got progressively i just isolated myself more and more and for me and i was praying about it and i was angry and it was like it, it had gotten to the point where I was being threatened with getting fired because I was so angry and I wasn't like listening and I was just doing whatever I wanted to do. And during that time, I just remember having this moment. I just had this moment where I just was like, okay, I'm going to do better. Like, I'm just going to do better. I'm going to go to work and I'm just going to have a better attitude and I'm just going to let it go. And I'm just going to do better. I didn't pray for things to change. I didn't pray for anything. I just decided that I was going to do better and I was not going to be right and being wrong. Mm, yeah, I help. Ooh, I was not going to be in agreement with being right about being wrong. And I put that down. And when I did that, I'm going to tell you what I stepped into. Because literally, literally, I remember saying, okay, I got to go to work early because my stuff was in one part of the building, right? And that's not where I was supposed to be sitting. And so when I went to my section, and at that time, my, my crew, like the people I worked with that I took calls with, we started at 8, but there was like a 555 crew. And I had to have come in significantly early because I remember I swiped my badge and the and at the, like the floor, the door would like the floor that I was on, the door clicked so hard when you swiped your badge. And so when I hit my badge and I opened the door, like the person that was my senior manager, um, who I was getting so much hate and heat from, she was in the middle of the floor talking to some representatives and so she turned around and they looked at me and I looked at them and I was probably thinking she was probably like why is she here so early and why is she here in this section and so she baited me over with her hands and so I went over and she was like hey like you all have some support she was like Romania is going to be watching y'all for the next two weeks until your supervisor comes back and I was like huh and she talked to the team for a little while and she told me to have like a morning huddle and introduce myself and then, you know, come talk to her. And so 
at that time, I was used to being on projects where I was stepping in for supervisors, even though I was not in an official leadership role. So this wasn't new for me. So, and I remember just thinking, I'm going to give it everything I got. And that's what I did for those two weeks. And it literally, I just became like a floater, like a stand-in. And I never was taking calls anymore. And then I ended up being able to apply for a permanent role. And that was that. And years later, like years, not not years later, because I literally got promoted to senior manager like a year and a half after that. But I remember that me and her was talking, right? And we was actually having lunch somewhere. And I was like, do you remember when um, that day when you gave me that, that role to take over Dre's team? And Lord, I said the man's name. Anyway, <laughs> to take over that team. And she said, yeah, she said, talk about right time, right place. And I was like, that's really all it was. She was like, yeah. She said, I had no idea. Like he had literally called me that morning saying that the team was stressing him out. He was stressed out. He was a new supervisor himself. And I had no idea. So when you stepped in, I was just like, okay, here, here you go. And I would have never been in that building at that time had I not decided to stop being right about being wrong and to let go. I had no expectation. Forget about expectations of promotion. I didn't even have expectations of how I was going to be received. I just was getting out of my own way. And I didn't know that's what it was called. I just was like, I'm letting it go. And when I did that, I allowed God to disrupt the moment that I was having, I allowed God to do that, right? When she offered me that, I didn't say, oh, but you had an attitude yesterday. You wanted to fire me last week. Let's talk about how y'all been doing. No, <laughs> I'm not talking about that. I don't have no room for that. And some of us are in, in this place of being so right about being wronged that God has no room to disrupt our now because we still got issues with God about yesterday and last year. And last month, and I completely decided to let it all go. And in doing that, I allowed God to disrupt the now I was having for the now he had for me. Do you understand? Like, I allowed God to be God. Too many of us are stuck in the having that we see and not the having that we believe. Like we're saying, I have it. But we're more in agreement with the having that we see right now and not the having that we believed. And I just was tired of being right about being wrong. I didn't want to. I just let it go completely. I had no expectations on anything other than how Manny was going to show up. That was literally it. That was literally it. And it actually impressed her when we talked on the fact that I never brought it up because like they were angry at me and I was angry at them and so I just want to help somebody with all this right you feel about being wrong oh but you don't understand and it's different than just work stuff and that is what keeps you out of allowing God to make it right because you're right God don't have room to be right because I'm right I'm not letting it go. You don't know how hard it is. You don't know what I've been through. We all have that story. To some degree, we all have had that moment where we're like, oh, but God, what about that time? And what about that time? And God, you said, allow God to literally come in and disrupt the now that you're having with the now that he has for you. Allow God to do that. Push past the residue, push past the remembrance, Push past the regret and let God step into your now.